everyone. It is so good to see you. My name is Pastor Jason, and I'm one of the pastors here at Hope Church, and I'm so thankful that you've chosen to worship with us on this, uh, on this great Memorial Day weekend. We're coming to the close of, of a series on parables that we've been looking at the last several weeks, and we've been talking about the concept that parables are, are stories that, uh, and illustrations that Jesus uses to teach alongside a, uh, a, a biblical truth or a heavenly principle. Some people say that parables are earthly stories with heavenly meanings, and uh, some people would say that they are stories that, uh, that really illustrate much more profound truth, in, in oftentimes in the sense that a parable uh, is always good news to some, but bad news to others. They are stories that both uh, reveal truth and then also conceal truth at the same time, and they are used to do so in order to make the kingdom of heaven more clear to those that God wants to reveal it to. When we come to Luke chapter 5, we see Jesus sharing a parable, actually two consecutive parables, uh, that talk about the, uh, the kingdom of heaven and, uh, and uh, how this impacts uh, how we respond uh, to the gospel. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to share it with you this morning. Before we begin, let's take a moment and pray. Father, we thank you so much uh, for the privilege to be able to gather We thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be able to look uh, to your word. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunities that you give us through the scriptures. And uh, we pray that you reveal yourself to us. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. As many of you may know, both my wife and I are uh, are longtime uh, public school educators. There was a time that uh, my wife tells the story of... uh, of being in a conference with a particular parent. And uh, the, the, the student was, uh, w- w- was struggling and the teacher was trying to convey what was going on to the parent and uh, was beginning to talk about uh, different plans and different educational strategies, begin talking about uh, what the student could, uh, could best do to prepare for the future, was talking about some uh, learning challenges that the students had and the best way to compensate for that, and most importantly, how the parents could be a support for that at home. And so after the teacher had gone through basically about a half an hour of laying out all these strategies, uh, the teacher asked the parent, do you have any questions, uh, that, that any pending questions that you just want to ask right now? And the parent said this, yes. My son has come home and told me something that I want to make sure that I get your perspective on because I want to make sure that I understand it very clearly. And the teacher said, please, please go ahead. What is your question? My son seems to think that you think that pro wrestling is fake, that you think that WWE is fake, that you think that all the wrestlers (laughs) that are hitting people on the back with the chairs and all that kind of, that, that you think that's not true. And the teacher said, I would love to discuss that with you, but can we, get back to, uh, can we get back to how your student is doing? And she indicated that the parents simply could not get past the fact that, uh, that wrestling was, uh, could be something other than genuine, than, than genuine sportsmanship. And sometimes it reminds us how sometimes the minor things become the major things. And once we get, conce- once we get uh, something conceived in our mind, it is difficult to see things a different way. Jesus, in, uh, in Luke chapter 5, is uh, declaring the gospel. He's declaring the good news of, uh, of, uh, of the kingdom of God. And people that have been far off from God are coming close to Him. In fact, Jesus is accused of... Uh, of eating and drinking with sinners because he's spending his time with those that uh, it appears that are farthest from the kingdom of heaven and is inviting them to the kingdom of God. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders began to question Jesus. The, the, the law once a year required that, uh, that, that, uh, that Jews at that time would fast on the Day of Atonement. But there was a group of Pharisees and Sadducees, uh, or I'm sorry, Pharisees and other religious leaders including John's disciples, that would fast twice a week. And they questioned Jesus about why they fasted and why John's disciples fasted, but Jesus never uh, encouraged his disciples to fast himself in the same particular manner. And this is the exchange that takes place. 
verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 33. And when they said to him, the disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the disciples of Pharisees, but yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, can you make a wedding guest fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will hold a fast in those days. Verse 36, he also told them a parable. He says, no one tears a piece uh, from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine in the old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put in fresh wineskins, and no one, after drinking old wine, desires the new, for he says the old is good. In these two parables, Jesus describes why it is so difficult for people, particularly religious people, people that have a, a, a long church history, why oftentimes it is so difficult for people to embrace the gospel, embrace the fact that Jesus has died and risen uh, for our sins and that our faith and salvation, that, that, that our salvation comes solely by trusting in his death and resurrection as the payment of our sins, followed by a life of obedience uh, to him. The question is, how is it, why is that so difficult for people to accept? And I think in these parables, Jesus gives us three, three reasons that we see in, 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 in the two parables. The first is this. The first is that oftentimes, oftentimes people have a... a um, People have a, a, a lack or an inability to, um, to have compatibility. There is, if I could put it this way, an absence of compatibility. Listen to how he, he tells this parable here. He, he says, no one, no one takes a piece from a new garment and puts it on the old garment. And if he does, the new will tear away from the old and they won't match. Jesus is sort of saying that if you have, a, if you have a, 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 an old garment and you try to put a new piece on an old garment and you sew that piece on, there's going to be some problems. They're not going to be compatible with one another. But one reason they're not going to be compatible is obviously they're not going to match. The color's not going to be the same. The, uh, the, 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 the fabric's not going to be the same. And uh, in fact, uh, one of them, the, the old fabric has already been shrunk and the new fabric hasn't been shrunk. And so w when you wash the old fabric and the new fabric together and the new fabric shrinks, it's going to tear and pull the old fabric. Jesus is saying that it's not compatible for, for new fabric to be, to be patched with something old. It doesn't. It's, it, it's, it's, completely, it's completely incompatible. Jesus seems to be saying here that... Um, that, uh, that, that, that you simply don't, uh, you simply, it seems to me that Jesus is saying that, 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 that the ministry of Jesus is not something that simply patches up old religion. It's not something that simply patches up your life. It's not that you and I can, uh, can live our lives any way that we want and believe anything we want. And, and where there's something inconsistent, we just patch it with Jesus and it makes the whole thing better. No, what, what Jesus seems to be saying is that, uh, is that his way, that the gospel, that, uh, that the, the fact that he died and rose for our sins and that we can, that we can tr uh, follow him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, that that is completely incompatible with all these systems of, of self-righteousness. That you can't just take Jesus and impose Jesus on what you already have and make it fit. No, Jesus is an entirely new garment. The gospel is an entirely new garment. And it can't be used to fix simply something that was broken. Jesus didn't come just simply to patch up your life and to patch up my life. He didn't come simply to patch up old systems and fix old, old broken down. No, no Jesus, Jesus came to make all things new. One of those all things that he has come to make new is you and I's life. But as long as we're trying to preserve the old, 
and just simply using Jesus to hold the old together, it doesn't really work. It is a lack of compatibility, an absence of compatibility. And so because of that, we often, if we're not careful, we can reject the gospel, the good news of Jesus, because we don't find it compatible with what our pre-existing life and belief system already is. The second reason that, uh, that many people can, can reject the good news or the gospel of Jesus is not just a lack of compatibility, but a lack of flexibility. He uses an illustration with wine and wineskins. Now, now, now let, me just, let me just give you a, a quick lesson in, uh, in ancient taxidermy, okay? <laughs> in, uh, in the ancient, uh, middle, middle, uh, ancient, ancient Near East, what, uh, after an animal is killed, particularly a goat, the flesh and the, the bones would be removed from the goat, and all you would have left is a skin. And oftentimes the skins would be sewed up, and uh, they could be used to hold liquid. They could be used almost like a canteen. And people would pour wine into the, into the wineskins, and it would hold the wine, and as it held the wine over a period of time, the wine would, would ferment. And as the wine began to ferment, it would, um, it, would, um, it would emit gases, and as it emit gases, as it emit gases, the, uh, the wine skins would begin to expand. And uh, as they began to expand, they would, they would take shape and hold the wine. Through the, through the maturing or through the, the fermentation process. And then the wine, after it has had enough time, would be, would be consumed in these old wine skins. New wine would be put in new wine skins. The new wine would become old wine as the, old, as the skins became old, and, uh, and, 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 and then it would be poured out of these, of these skins. Now, after a while, they would need to make more new wine. They would need to make new wine. But the problem was, is those, um, those skins that, uh, that were used initially had, had expanded when the gases had gotten in there and had taken a new shape and a new size. But they got to the point where as they got older, they began to become hardened in the shape that they were. And they uh, no longer had the elasticity and the flexibility that they once had. And so if someone, after they would drink or use the wine in the, new wine, in the old wineskins, if they were to pour new wines and fresh grapes into the new wineskins, when, the, uh, when the, the fermentation process would start and the gases would be emitted, the wineskins did not have the elasticity to handle that and... Uh, it would cause the wine skin to burst and the, the wine to, to pour everywhere. And so both the wine was ruined as well as the wine skin. There was a lack of flexibility. And so Jesus seems to be saying here, or what I think Jesus seems to be saying, is that there was a, there was a point of time with these with, with, with these religious people that he was dealing with. That they had accepted the law, they had accepted the, uh, the truth of the Old Testament, they had, they had done some things in their lives to, 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 to follow God, and it had, ex it had expanded them and extended them, but they got to the point that they no longer had any more elasticity in their life. And so when Jesus came, and Jesus was something new to them, or something they perceived as new, even though he'd been here since the beginning of time, um, e e even though that had happened, th there was not the flexibility in their lives to understand or fully embrace who he was. And so what would happen is, um, is when, Jesus would, uh, when Jesus was imposed upon them by others, um, it, would, it would cause the wineskins to just expand and to burst. It reminds me so much of what we see in our current world, isn't it? Especially in religious movements, especially in churches. That we have people that, it, uh, that have, have expanded and have grown, but have gotten to a certain point 
that flexibility is preventing them from fully embracing and receiving who Christ is. And that, that the maturity process is gone and, and there has been a there's been a growth and there's been an expansion and 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 um but since the growth and since the expansion there's there's come a time of hardening. And anytime something new is is deposited, anytime something new is deposited in their life, anytime they have the chance to uh, to stretch and expand and become something new. Because things have been hardened for so long, it just kind of burst and, and, um, and kind of blows, the, blows all up. As I get older, I'm beginning to realize I very much reflect those wineskins. When I was young, it seemed, like, it seemed like you would try to embrace every, I would try to embrace every kind of change that I could. But the older that I get, the, uh, you know, the, the harder it is. You know, th- this week there's a recall on Jif peanut butter. I'm like, what are we going to do? We can't have Jif peanut butter anymore. Not realizing that there's more peanut butter in the world than just Jif. But, um, but sometimes we expand to the point that we expand as long and as much as we can. And if we're not careful, we um, will prevent ourselves from growing anymore. And with others, if we're not careful and we force them, force new things on them when they're not ready, then, then there's this, there's this, um, this event where both the wineskin and the wine just, just blows up. We all have a certain limit of flexibility. And I'm not talking about being flexible with the truths of the gospel. I'm not talking about that. There are certain things that we are just, uh, that we are committed to and, and, and unchanging. But just, uh, just as wine is, uh, is carried in different vessels, so, um, so there are times that we need to be flexible uh, in, in, the, in the unchanging truths that we have. Not, not, flexible with the unchanging truth, but flexible in, uh, in how we apply and how we uh, live in and demonstrate those truths from God that are absolutely eternal. Sometimes uh, we have a hard time embracing and receiving the gospel because there, we, we lack a uh, deficiency of compatibility, and sometimes it's because we have a deficiency of flexibility. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's a, a it, it's a difference of conceivability. We simply cannot fathom that God may be trying to do something new among us. L- look how Jesus words it uh, in verse thirty nine. He says, "After no one after drinking the old wine desires new, for he says the old is good." It's interesting in that phrase. It's interesting. Uh, Jesus says that, that the man says that the old is good. He doesn't say the old is better. He says the old is good. Which means, which, which means those that like the old here are, aren't even considering the fact that something else might be different and might be comparable. If he says the old is better, he would be implying that at least he had tried the new. But when he says the old is good, what he is saying that what has been what has been in the past is always good enough, and there's no reason to even consider anything different. Now, here's the thing. Here's the interesting thing about, about, about wine. Old wine was new wine at one time. It's just old wine is new wine that has endured the test of time. Like, like watch this. Watch this. Old, old wine, old wine... You, most people would argue old wine is, is good. Old wine, many people would argue, is better wine. Here's the thing. You can't make old wine. It, just like you can't make an antique. You can make something that is good, and if it is good, it will endure the test of time, and it will become an antique, or it will become old wine. But you can't instantly make, old, you can't instantly make new wine old. It requires a process of maturity. It requires a process of time. 
it requires a process of patience. And so it lets us know that in order for, for, for old wine to exist, new wine has to be produced. And it has to be given the time to mature to the point of old wine. I was listening to an interview this week and someone was talking about the songwriter Paul Simon. And the question was asked to Paul Simon, when does a song become a classic? And Paul Simon says, uh, says after a hundred years. That if a song is good enough to endure a hundred years, then it becomes a classic. That, according to that, nobody makes a classic in their lifetime. That we create something that is good, and if it's good enough, it will, tan it will stand the test of time. And if it stands the test of time, it will be recognized by the next generation. I think Jesus is saying here that there's nothing wrong with the old wine. But if new wine is going to be created, that new wine needs to be put in new wineskins, that there has to be a place of, of flexibility, that there has to be a place where, uh, where maturity can take place. And that after a while and after a season, the new wine, when it is, uh, when it is put in the right, right environment, when it's put in the right conditions, when it's given time to mature, that eventually the, the young, immature new wine becomes old, mature, palatable wine. And while that takes place, new wine again is, is created. Sometimes people have a hard time embracing the good news of Jesus. Because sometimes the lack of compatibility, that we have a hard time forcing Jesus into our systems that we're unwilling to give up. Sometimes it's a lack of flexibility. That we simply don't make room or make space for Jesus to, uh, to fully embody everything that we do, fully indwell everything we do. Sometimes there's a lack of uh, conceivability. That we can't conceive that maybe God is doing something new in this generation or He's doing something in this generation that will impact the next generation. And sometimes if we're not careful, those like in this passage that claim to be the most religious, sometimes if we're not careful, we can miss out on what God is trying to do among us. When Jesus began telling the story, he was asked about fasting. And he, um, he talked about fasting and the bridegroom and, and something that sort of doesn't really seem to make sense with the rest of the passage. But what Jesus was talking about is he was talking about the fact that when you're with a bridegroom, before the wedding, you don't, uh, you don't fast, you celebrate. But after the bridegroom is taken then you mourn, and then you fast. He was talking about his own life. The disciples were with him, and they were celebrating. There was going to be a day that he was going to be taken from them. And once he is taken from them, then they will mourn, and then they will fast. Many people believe that that taking, taking from them referred to his, to his death. That they were taken from him, and that he mourned. I'm sorry, that, that he was taken from them and that they mourned all day Friday, all day Saturday, and until Sunday when they learned of his resurrection. The death and resurrection of Jesus took all their mourning away, took all their sorrow away, took all their guilt and shame and sin away. It does the same for us today. Father, I thank you that Jesus died on behalf of our sin. And that Jesus rose from the dead. And because of that, we, have, we can have life eternally.
Father, as we shared, would you give us the um, would you give us the ability to recognize that uh, our lives must be given completely to you? That we must be flexible, and that we must conceive the fact that you are doing something new among your people in this time and uh, even in this day. Father, we lift up um, we lift up those in Texas that um, that are mourning another shooting. We lift up the families of those uh, of those school children and the teachers and all those impacted this week, Lord God. Our hearts go out to them. And Father, we pray that you will heal and, and comfort those that are impacted. And that, um, that you, Lord God, will restore our land. Father, we look to you as our only source of hope and help and comfort in these times. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, our Savior, and our soon-coming King. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for, uh, for being with us. I hope you have a great Memorial Day. hope you celebrate... Uh, Hope you celebrate all weekend and enjoy your day off tomorrow. just want to make you aware of a couple of things uh, coming up in the life of our church. We're going to celebrate our students on, uh, on, the, on the 12th here. We're really excited about doing that. And, uh, and so, so we encourage you to, uh, to, to, to be prayerful with us and, and be part of it. Well, let you know, you can find out about, uh, about, about uh, Hope Church by going to our website, www.hopeanddayton.org. While you're there, you can give of your tithes, your gifts, and your offering. Uh, you can also do so um, through, uh, through our text to give option, through our Hope in Dayton app that's available both on our, uh, on our, on our, um, at, the, at the Google store or the, uh, the Apple store, the app store. Uh, and then, of course, of course, you can uh, join us here at our, our Wilmington Pike location in Dayton. Hope the weather is great this weekend. Hope you get a chance to get out and enjoy your weekend. And until next week, we'll see you. Lord bless. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus cause your name is power your name is healing your name Jesus.
Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus 